Right. One of the key things that enabled Hitler to establish a dictatorship was his creation of a police state. <clears throat> now, remember that, um, just to sum up so far again, Hitler had been given emergency powers after the Reichstag fire. He had used those powers to win an election and he had created, passed the Enabling Act. He got rid of political opposition uh, from the communists, from other political parties, from trade unions, and from the land air. Um, he'd also removed opposition within the Nazi party um, on the Night of the Long Knives in June 1934, where he had culled the SA, um, including the leaders, including Rom, and also other political opponents, such as um, von Papen and von Schleicher. Remember, 400 people were purged or killed in four days, the Night of the Long Knives. So Hitler's got rid of a lot of opposition, but he's still not a dictatorship. What he needs to do now is to control the German people. And the best way of doing that for Hitler was to create a police state. Now, um, there are four, thing, four things to remember when talking about Hitler's police state. One, the SA. Two, the Gestapo. Three, the concentration camps. And four, the law courts. And that's all you need to know. And you just need a few key points about each of those things and to understand how Hitler used them to control Germany. So, the key thing to remember is he used the fiercely loyal SS. Now, um, initially the SS were created as a bodyguard for Hitler. Um, and they became Hitler and the Nazis' own police force. They were 100% loyal to Hitler. And they had basically sorry, two key roles. One was to destroy opposition to the Nazis, in whatever shape it arose. And secondly, it was to um, carry out Nazi racial policies, or racial purification. So two things the SA SS did. Um, remember, it was the SS that had purged and, or, or got rid of Rom, and had carried out the Night of the Long Knives. Now, during the 1930s, the SS grew to um, around about 50,000 members. Um, it, its primary role was to destroy opposition, um, but it was also to carry out racial purification. Now, this was carried out by a group called the Death's Head Units. Now, the Death's Head Units mm, properly are the Totenkopf, capital T, O T E N K O P F. Now, they ran the concentration camps, which, as you remember, which you will know, is the third thing that Hitler used to control German people. Now, with the SS, not only do you have the Death's Head units, but you also had the Waffen, or Waffen. As you can tell, I didn't do GCSE history, so German even. Um, the Waffen FS, W A W F E N. That means that's the SS that are part of the army. Now, they are armor brigades. These are the guys in the tanks that have got all the best kit, and they're just supreme soldiers. They're incredibly loyal and incredibly patriotic, and would do anything for the German, for the, for the Nazis. Um, and they go to wherever the fighting is fiercest, and they're very, very, very feared. Um, so the SS, key role in the police state. And the second one is the Gestapo, G-E-S-T-A-P-O, the Gestapo. There is a German phrase for it, but I can never remember it. Gestapo will do fine. Now, these are the non-uniformed secret police. Um, they were run, were taken over by the SS <coughs> in 1936. So ultimately, they come under the control of Heinrich Himmler. However, the day-to-day -day control of the Gestapo is under a man called Heydrich. H A H E Y D R I C H Heydrich. All right. Um, now, the um, Gestapo could arrest anyone criticizing the Nazis, and they could be imprisoned without trial. They could be. They could arrest people purely on suspicion. They needed no proof whatsoever. Okay. Arbitrary arrest. Now, the Gestapo and the SS were accountable to Hitler um, and their commanders, not the law courts. So there was no one to stop the Gestapo or the SS doing what they did. The only people that could control them were the leaders of the Nazi party, and the SA, SS and the Gestapo were doing what they wanted. So they were a law unto themselves. Um, Right, um, by 1939, there were 150,000 Germans under protective arrest. Okay, now that basically means that they were not criminal, they had just done stuff the Nazis didn't like. Um, 
such as um, criticising the Nazis. Or they were people that Nazis didn't like, Jews, um, political opponents, some church groups, particularly Jehovah's Witnesses, actually, um, and socialists. Now, um, these people were arrested by the Gestapo or the SS, and um, they were sent to the concentration camps. Now, the Gestapo had informers throughout Germany. These are just individual people that would snitch on anyone that did anything anti-Nazi. Right? And it was once claimed that um, every staircase has an informer, and it wasn't actually far wrong. And there are horrible examples later on of children grassing on their parents, um, and parents being sent to concentration camps, and the children being rewarded by the Nazis. Um, so there was a great deal of support for what the Nazis were doing from some of the Germans themselves. Now, the third thing the Nazis did to create the police state was the concentration camps. Now, the first of those, as I mentioned earlier, was Dachau, D-A-C-H-A-U, that was set up in 1934. Now, these concentration camps were basically set up in isolated areas, away from towns and cities, away from prying eyes. Um, the inmates were generally political prisoners or undesirables, prostitutes, Jews, um, socialists, Jehovah's Witnesses, troublesome churchmen. Um, and the inmates had to do, do hard physical labour, and really hard physical labour. Strict discipline and poor food. Beatings were common, disease was common, death was very, very common. Now from 1938, some of these concentration camps were used as forced labour. So the SS, um, the, the death's head units, would use the inmates to produce stuff for the war, for war effort, uh, particularly uniforms. Um, these workers were unpaid, and if any of you have seen Schindler's List, that's a really good example of what these places were like. Um, now, the fourth and final way that the Nazis controlled the German people was the law courts. Now, um, what happened was Hitler set up the National Socialist League for the Maintenance of the Law. The National Socialist League for the Maintenance of the Law. Now, all judges had to join this group, the National um, Socialist League. And what that meant was that if the Nazis disliked you or you weren't um, supportive of their policies, they would stop you joining this league and therefore you couldn't be a judge. So what they were doing was making sure that all judges were fiercely loyal to the Nazis. Um, so the judges, judges were all Nazis or Nazi supporters. There were no fair trials for opposition groups, opposition people in Germany at all. Um, and Hitler then set up the New People's Court, which um, it took care of all cases for treason which is crimes against the state. And in Germany, that meant crimes against Nazism. Now, the judges were hand-picked, and if the sentence they gave was thought to be too lenient, Hitler himself stepped in to, to, to impose a stricter sentence. So, four things to remember. Um, as, a, as a way of um, establishing the dictatorship, the SS, the Gestapo, the concentration camps, and the law courts. And um, you'll often see photographs of these judges in the law courts, and they're all stood behind Nazi flags and doing the Nazi salute. And that's really scary, because the law is supposed to be impartial and supposed to be fair. That wasn't the case in Nazi Germany. If you did anything anti-Nazi, you were guilty. And you were either tried and sent to a, a concentration camp, or you were just sent to a concentration camp without a trial. All right? And that's how Hitler um, controlled Germany. All right.